Hey folks and welcome to the Truck King YouTube channel and rainy British Columbia. I am out here today to test that, the brand new Hyundai Santa Fe XRT. Now the XRT model is all about getting off the beaten path, going for adventures, and that's what we're going to try and do today. So in this video we will hit some dirt roads and we will tow a trailer, and then of course I'll show you all the features to find out if this new Santa Fe is any good. kick this one off looking at the powertrain. So the base engine in this new Santa Fe is actually a 1.6 liter four cylinder hybrid engine. And then you can step up to this guy right here. That is a 2.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder. It makes 277 horsepower, 311 pound feet of torque. And that is sent through an eight speed dual clutch transmission. Now the hybrid production just began. So those hybrid models should start rolling out right about now. Uh, these gas models are built in Alabama and they're already on dealer lots. Now clearly the biggest change on this SUV has to be the styling. I mean, it's a full departure from the way it looked before. There's no attempt to have family resemblance. There's no callbacks to older models. This thing is a clean sheet design and it is pretty boxy and rugged. I think most people, my eyes included, it reminds me of the Land Rover Defender or some other Land Rover products. Now, what's interesting about that is that, you know, most other manufacturers have jumped onto this outdoor adventure trend, but those models just get paint and plastic, maybe a lift and tires if you're lucky. Whereas Hyundai went, you know what, let's just make the entire design boxy and rugged, which is, uh, you know what, it is a bold move for sure. I think this is a bit of a polarizing design. Some people are going to love it and some people are not going to love it quite as much. But that's why it's a big chance that Hyundai took here and I think that's pretty cool. Now I can show you a couple of the features. You get those H's in the taillights and the headlights. The rear windshield wiper here is fully hidden, which is pretty slick as well. So when you're not using it, you don't have to look at it. And then another neat feature right over here is Hyundai's added these handholds. So you push in there, it gives you a nice handle and that allows you to climb up and access the roof rack. Because once again, the idea here is somebody buying this vehicle, especially the, especially the XRT, is going to be somebody who wants to go outdoors, bring a kayak, a canoe, something like that, maybe some bikes. So you're going to be accessing your roof quite a bit. So you know what? Let's take a break right now, drop into the comments, and please let me know because I am curious. Does this design look good to your eyes? Do you think Hyundai went too far? Did they do too much? Or is this the best looking Santa Fe ever? I'm not quite ready to say that yet, but it is growing on me. Now please, let me know your thoughts. Now let's get over what you get with the XRT package. One of the biggest upgrades right there, a set of all-terrain tires. In this case, they're Continental Terrain Contacts. And that's always a big deal. Adding a set of tires is one of the most influential off-road upgrades you can make. And I'm happy that came here to the XRT. Now the other thing is this one gets a one inch lift, a little bit more than that compared to the rest of the lineup. So you are getting a little bit of added ground clearance and you're getting additional cooling, more cooling for the transmission to make sure you're good when you're off road, but also when you're towing because the XRT also gets a slightly higher tow rating at 4,500 pounds than the rest of the lineup. Now those black alloy wheels are part of the package here too and some of the unique styling you're just getting side door cladding emblems on this thing plus you're getting the front and rear fascias are revised for the xrt so it does look a little different from the lineup but for the most part the things i really appreciate are the lift and the tires those two things will make this legitimately better than a standard santa fe once the roads get rough and no i think we all recognize this is not an off-roader but it could be a decent rough roader. And in this video, we will tackle some dirt roads coming up to see how it handles. 
let's look inside now and we're going to start at the back and there's an interesting change that hyundai made inside this santa fe now has a standard third row so yes it is a three row vehicle first of all though we will look at the second row here on the xrt model you still get a bench over on the calligraphy which is the top trim model you get standard captain's chairs here in your second row i'll do my best to show you guys myself so this second row is 42 inches of rear seat legroom and uh, it's actually quite a bit i'm quite comfortable in here i got more than enough knee room no problem my knees aren't sitting up too tall or anything like that so yeah the second row is plenty big for a full-size adult i have enough headroom too which is nice now in terms of amenities back here we do have sunshades important for the little kiddos a couple cup holders over here molded straight into the door one of the neat features that i like is right over here this center console is hinged at the back and at the front so the people in the back can reach up and tilt it forward so if you do have kids or passengers in the back they can also stash their stuff in there and then grab it out from the second row so that is a pretty smart design now I'm going to go ahead and hop into the third row. And yes, as you probably already noticed, I'm shooting myself today. So I'll do my best to show you what the third row looks like with me in it. So first of all, you hit up here on the shoulder. That seat pushes and tumbles forward. Now back here in the third row, we got to put the seats up. It's not a lot of leg room. It's just 29 inches, just under 30 actually of third row leg room so yes this third row is very much optimized for hauling either people or cargo not both once the third row is up there's not a ton of space behind it still here i go trying to jam myself in back here the truth is i don't fit i don't think i'm going to have enough leg room to get the seat in front of me locked into place oh my gosh there we go. <laughs> so what's actually immediately apparent, and I do climb into a lot of third rows, I have enough headroom. I have plenty of headroom actually. And I stand at 6'2", just over 300 pounds. And this is the advantage of a boxy design. Make your vehicle super boxy and it just means that the back, you don't end up cutting off your headroom. But yeah, I'm not going to be able to show it off great, but just trust me when I say that my knee room is absolutely lacking. I'm right into the seat in front of me. My feet are sitting a bit tall too. So sadly the floor kind of comes up back here. Uh, I could not sit back here for a long period of time and be comfortable. So, you know, that is an important note. The third row in the new Santa Fe, like I said, it'll haul kids, it'll haul people for short periods of time. Full-size adults are gonna be tight back here though. And once again, you're making the choice. Do I want to haul people or stuff and I'll show you the cargo and you'll see what I mean now we're back here at the hatch so let's open it up and again thanks to the boxy design this hatch opening is quite big which is good but behind this third row once again there's really next to no space I have my camera bag here and this bag alone essentially takes up all the space behind your third row. Now when you tumble this seat, you end up with lots of storage space. So I'll say it one last time, this is the kind of vehicle where you have to choose whether you're hauling people in the third row or cargo in the back. And if you're doing both, well, you're gonna haul people uncomfortably and not a lot of cargo. Now one other unfortunate thing about this XRT model is there is no spare tire. We can open up the floor down here. Whoops, open up the floor down here and you will see there's your fill kit, which they legally have to put in here if there's no spare. And there's a little bit of storage under there, which is nice. But for a model that's billed as something that's supposed to be for adventure, it's a little unfortunate to see that Hyundai didn't go with a proper spare top. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here we are behind the wheel of the XRT. And we're actually gonna start off with our rough road portion of the video. We're here on essentially a service road in British Columbia running up one of the mountains and it is just a rough woo gravel road with some big potholes in it. 
But to be totally honest, this is exactly the kind of road I think the XRT is designed for. This is not an off-roader, it's what we would call a rough roader here on the channel, and this is absolutely a rough road. Now the one thing I will say I notice is the lift. Even though it's just over one inch, coming through these big potholes even, you just don't have to worry quite as much about kissing your bumper, about the rear end dragging out of a hole, something along those lines. So that little bit of clearance, and I have driven sort of regular Santa Fe's all day. We've been in the calligraphy model for quite a bit of the day, and you can feel that difference. That I'm just a little taller, and I'm not tagging anything down there on the ground and those are the things that leads to confidence and then of course the tires and again no this is not an extreme test for the tires but even out here on wet sloppy gravel the grip is strong you know I'm throwing it around here and it's absolutely sticking so that is nice and that's gonna make a legitimate difference if you do get into some hairy stuff when you're off a paved road now, when it comes to electronics here, we do have three terrain modes. You have snow mode, mud mode, and sand mode. And so I'm running in mud mode right now. And I've got to say that I think what it's doing, what I can feel it doing, is sending power to all four wheels through the all-wheel drive right off the bat. There's no slippage and when I take off aggressively you might expect yeah maybe a tire would slip and then it would correct. No, when you put it in these off-road driving modes it realizes hey this driver is gonna want <laughs> to have power to all four reels right off the bat and so that's what it's doing and there's another thing that inspires confidence because there's no slip nothing along those lines. So Santa Fe, I mean, they're really trying to change the attitude of the Santa Fe to be something more adventure ready. And there's some big deep potholes. And this thing is just eating it all up, no problem. Now, is it a super comfortable ride out here? No, I'm at doing speeds between 30 and 40 kilometers an hour. And when I'm hitting those potholes, it's pretty much maxed out. I definitely wouldn't want to go any faster than this. All right, folks, now we're here in the Santa Fe XRT. And we've got a trailer on the back. We've got a couple of sea back there. Probably somewhere 2,000, 2,500-ish pounds. So I'm not pushing the limits, but still a nice weight. And honestly, this is, I think, what you could expect a, a regular owner of this type of SUV to tow. Something like two sea a couple of snowmobiles, maybe a fishing boat, something along those lines. Now the XRT has a tow rating of 4,500 pounds, and that is the most in the Santa Fe lineup. Most of the models get a 3,500 pound tow rating, and then the hybrid has a tow rating even lower than that. And then the biggest differentiator between 3,500 and this 4,500 pounds is cooling. We get extra transmission cooling here in the XRT, which is gonna make sure that everything stays the right temperature, even when you're pulling heavy. And uh, we're coming up a hill right now, I just, Merge right up to highway speed, no problem. So the powertrain, I really don't think you're gonna have an issue, even with the trailer on the back. And then dynamically, again, I know we're not really pushing the limits here, but the Santa Fe feels good. It feels sure-footed. Doesn't feel like it's being pushed around whatsoever by the trailer behind it. You do feel it back there. I won't say it's that kind of experience where you'd forget about the trailer, but it is absolutely nowhere near, you know, overpowering the vehicle, which just means that it's a, it's a calm towing experience, and, uh, and calm equals confidence. You want things to be nice and smooth and calm, and, uh, and that's what's going on right here. So I would love to load it right up to 4,500, and maybe one day here on the channel we'll get that chance. But uh, I can say with a couple of sea on it, it tows quite well. Of course, the mirrors could be a little bigger, but you can't fault the vehicle for that. Um, you could always get aftermarket towing mirrors if that's something you wanted to do. And then another thing I do appreciate is there is a tow haul mode. Hyundai just calls it towing mode, but I love that they put that in there. It adjusts your shift points, allows the transmission to really drive the RPM even higher, and that allows you to access that power when you need it. So uh, the tow mode is also making a difference, and that's not something that's super common in this segment. Most of these SUVs don't have any kind of specific mode for towing, so I appreciate that Hyundai uh, put that in here as well. 
now let me talk about some features especially in that calligraphy model so in the calligraphy you get wireless phone charging for two phones so dual phone charging which is pretty cool wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto in these things which is nice and then one of the most unique features I think in the top trim calligraphy is a UV light that's over in the top glove box so you can toss your phone or frankly anything else that fits in there turn on that UV light and it's going to sterilize whatever is in the top glove box over a 10 minute period so throw your phone in hit the button and 10 minutes later it comes out with 99% of the germs eliminated. The calligraphy model also gets a head up display which I appreciate and then this XRT has it as well we get this massive curved screen so there is a bit of a black bar to separate your center screen from your driver info screen so I do appreciate that but uh, I just my point here is it looks good we're moving into this fully digital future and the one thing the screen allows you to do is you can change up the gauges the layout the look the style or it can change when you change drive mode so it's nice to have uh, all of those different choices now another choice that Hyundai made here in the Santa Fe is to go for a mix of real buttons and knobs and capacitive buttons, the touch sensitive buttons. And this is interesting to me because in the Hyundai Tucson, it's basically all touch sensitive buttons. In the Hyundai Palisade, it's basically no touch sensitive buttons. And then in the Santa Fe, it seems to be a nice mix. Now this is a personal preference because I will say the touch sensitive works fine. It has haptic feedback so when you hit that button you actually get a little bit of a vibration so you know you've touched it. So those things are good. I still believe though that these touch sensitive buttons are a little distracting. You generally have to take your eyes off the road and really look down and mash whatever you want to hit. And uh, because of that I'm still a big believer in real physical buttons and knobs. So that really depends on personal preference but it just needs to be noted that here in the Santa Fe it's a, it's a mix of both. Let me go through the pricing and trims now. So here in Canada the Santa Fe is going to start at $40,999 for the preferred model. Then you step up to preferred with trend. Then you get to the XRT which is right smack dab in the middle. So here in Canada this XRT has an MSRP of $46,999. And then there's a luxury model and finally that ultimate calligraphy that sits atop the range that gets all of those features and if you go for that calligraphy you're talking about $53,499 Canadian. <laughs>we have arrived at the end of this one now I do think a lot of things with the Santa Fe didn't change in terms of the power is still good it still drives nice down the road and those things didn't need to change the biggest change here though has to be the styling and I believe that it's gonna pull in a whole new customer that Hyundai just wasn't speaking to before. And of course, Hyundai's happy to sell you a Tucson or a Palisade if this thing is a little bit too extreme for you. So yeah, it's gonna be curious to see how the new design is accepted in the marketplace by consumers. So yeah, that's it for this one. I need to hear you from you now, so please go in the comments. Let me know about everything you just saw, the styling on the Santa Fe, the features, the way it drives, the XRT model. As always, while you're down there leaving that comment, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, hit join to become a member, and then come right back here to Trucking to see what we're testing next. See ya.